Okay, everyone, welcome to another New Jersey Constitutional Republicans virtual conversation. It's my great privilege and honor this evening to have Cumberland County Republican freeholder candidate Victoria Grutch Lodz here tonight with me. Hi, Victoria. Hey, JR. How you doing? Great. It's great to have you here. And of course, Victoria, you're very popular and well known in Cumberland County. But for those who may not have met you or know you, tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure, happy to do that, JR. And, and really, that's one of the things I'm most proud of. And, and usually, if you ever hear a little soundbite of me talking about my background, I start right there. And I start with my family being here for five generations. My, my two young boys are the sixth generation uh, here living on our family's farm. And, and that's, a, that's a, a heritage I'm really proud of. Um, that shows commitment and hard work. And it really all revolves around that core unit of a family and how important that is in this day and age and, and to build a community around a family. That is really truly one of our fundamentals. Uh, my family came here straight from Italy uh, with absolutely nothing. And they, they started their family farm, you know, and those were the days when you had a lot of kids, they had seven children and they were all there to be the workforce. And you were taught to work together. You were taught to look out for each other. You were taught an honest day's hard work for an honest day's pay. And being a farmer, you didn't always get that, right? Because sometimes mother nature has other plans in store for you, but that's okay. And that builds integrity and you keep working hard for what you have. And that's what it's always been about. And uh, you know, for me, it was very important to, to stay here and raise my family here. And um, I, I'm just so very proud of that. And quite frankly, I, I don't wanna see my kids have to leave. I don't wanna see them have to be that first generation that has to move away and, and sort of start again. You know, and that's 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 one of the wonderful things we have here in Cumberland County. And you know, we always have is that opportunity for more. And we just want to make sure that we keep on seeing that for generations to come. That's right. And of course, the family is so important to many of us here in South Jersey, whose families have been here for many generations. Uh, our family, too, has been here since 1759. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's as though uh, some of the people who have families uh, who've been here for many generations, a couple of uh, centuries even, are almost forgotten for those who are coming in here illegally, which of course the Democrats um, are supporting policies like uh, sanctuary city state policies that mm -hmm. we'll talk about in a moment, but also talk about the fact that you're an educator, correct? Sure, so um, I, I like to call my, um, my professional background uh, an evolution in public service, right? Uh, and so it really started out, uh, I wanted to be a writer, to be quite honest with you. I wanted to go into journalism because I think communication is so very, it's really, again, to use that word fundamental of our democracy and of our society and our community. And I went into that and lo and behold, I uh, stumbled upon um, a then Assemblyman Nick Aselta and I started doing an internship in his office County College um, became, you know, sort of aware of all the different levels of government, how they all work together, um, how, how all of that trickles down into servicing and helping people that live here, and how, you know, we also want to sometimes limit those powers and, and those sort of regulations, um, especially, you know, my family was a small business owner. We had a, a couple small businesses in our family, quite frankly. And you know, sometimes you want to be able to operate and uh, without you know a stronghold of government, you know, kind of on your back. And that was really important to me. And I, I started to see more and more of that. And my my focus kind of shifted um, from journalism, but I took those communication skills and went into government. And I, I eventually worked my way up and became the chief of staff to Senator Nick Vesalta, and worked with him for a number of years and worked in the state legislature on a number of issues and programs, I mean, across the board. And you really begin to get a fast education on you know, how, how things work here, uh, governmentally, locally, a lot of different areas of, of, of interest. And um, at that point, I kind of saw the importance 
of working with our families and, and working with um, you know, people who really just needed help. And, and we see that if you have a strong family, if you have a, 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 a safe and stable place to call home for your family, um, people can be much more profitable here in the state of New Jersey and in Cumberland County. And so from uh, Senator Selta's office as chief of staff, I went on to become the first executive director of our local affiliate of Habitat for Humanity. And we built homes all around Cumberland County with families who, for one reason or another, medical debt, whatever kind of situation kind of befell them, you know, outside of their control. Um, we worked with the community. We worked with people who, you know, said, we, we want to give of our time. We want to help. And we're willing to help our neighbor build this house. And, and that's what they did. And it was really such a joyous thing for me to work with families and volunteers and and you know, union volunteers and, and volunteers from local restaurants and businesses, and, and they would come out and bring their families. They loved it. I, I would bring my, my kids too, even though they were little at the time. And it was just such an awesome experience. And from there, you know, once again, we, we focused, I honed in a little bit deeper and it was you know, looking at the kids, the kids that are here in our county and you know, okay, their families were building these homes and they were so happy and they were, they were so excited to build this life for their children, but we need to make sure that those opportunities are here for those children and that those children have the, the support that they need to thrive here um, and so that they're ready to take on those opportunities when they come. And I found myself going into education, which I, I never saw for myself, but that's the wonderful thing about America, right? You can, you can continue to follow your heart and your dreams and um, that's where I find myself now. I find myself as a high school educator at Bridgeton High School. And I'll tell you, JR, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done. Well, that's great, Victoria. And I can assure you that it's not too late for you to embark on your writing career. And you can still be an educator. And you can most <laughs> Believe importantly Believe me, I use it every day. <laughs> and, you, and you can most importantly be our freeholder in Cumberland County as well. And of course, no doubt, Victoria, you gain great experience uh, working for our fine state Republican Senator, Mr. Aselta, Senator Aselta years ago, which provided great uh, impetus for you. Now, I would assume that your family was, worked so hard, your father, your, your, your family worked hard as farmers that you've probably always been pretty conservative and, and a Republican. Would that be safe to say? That's what our family always has been. Um, you know, I, it, they were always small business owners. They were, you know, very, you know, fiscally conservative. Uh, you know, they mm -hmm. wanted to be able to to run their businesses. They wanted to be able to um, build a life for themselves, kind of without the government breathing down their back and over-regulating them right out of the state, which we've seen so many people um, have that happen to them. Uh, my, mm. my father's side of the family, uh, they're originally from uh, Cape May and they have a small hotel, motel business down there. So in the tourism business, and um, that's always been a family business and I hope it always remains that way. And my mother's side of the family, they've had a, a small farm and um, a small home heating oil uh, business. And, and so same thing, you know, where you see a lot of regulations and um and things like this come in and, and they just you know, wanted to be able to build their business freely and so that's kind of always been my background and kind of how i i got to where i am now uh the joke mm -hmm. always was that the farmers from uh the atlantic county side of things were more democratic and the ones from east Vineland were more republican so <laughs> right so you're from east Vineland. <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> That's good. Now, uh, Victoria, we like to talk quite a bit about with the Constitutional Republican uh, movement and organization. We talk a lot about the importance of local representation. Mm -hmm. uh, often, we, we, what we uh, try to, we, we attempt to educate our listeners in is the fact that you probably, as a freeholder, have a greater re direct uh, impact on the lives of the people of Cumberland County than even some of our federal officials. Mm -hmm. So describe describe for the voters in our audience uh, some of the responsibilities that uh, you're given as a freeholder on the Cumberland County Freeholder Board. Well, sure, JR. So, you know, there's that old saying, right? All politics is local. And, and mm -hmm. it really is. And the people that you encourage to run for office at the local level are the people that know the concerns and, and the inner workings of the community the best, they really are. 
And I, I've had a lot of people who um, have never really paid attention to politics or haven't you know, made the time and, and they kind of see somebody who's just like them, who's from where they're from and they're saying, hey, I wanna know more, educate me. And this is what it's all about, right? You know, Educating uh, the people that live here and getting them involved and making them aware of what's happening. Uh, you know, I even last year, uh, so I am a teacher and I, uh, the NJA invited me to um, sit on a leadership panel uh, about uh, NJA members running for office. And, and they were all just really astonished that a, a Republican NJA member was running for office. And I said, you know, we, we do exist. It's okay. And um, they wanted to know, you know, how, how can we get you know, more of you out, out to do this? And I said, you lead by example, JR, and that's really what it's about. Right. So as a freeholder, um, you know, I like to sum it up in a way that you're, you're a manager of people, right? You're, you're, looking, you're looking at the services that are provided here in the county, roads, social services, health services, um, aging, um, I think I said education, health and, health and senior yep. services, um, roads, elections, um, the courts, and you're making sure that these things are run properly. You're making sure that County tax money is managed properly, is spent well and effectively in the best interests of our residents that live here in the county. And sometimes we don't always see that. Sometimes, uh, especially with a, with a very unbalanced board, uh, we see a lot of sort of falling in line. And I, I just wanna bring some balance back to that, have some really you know honest conversations, intelligent discourse, and make sure that we really are managing these services and these funds and the people that work for our county in the best interest of the taxpayers that live here. Right. And of course, one of the responsibilities, and let's talk a little bit about the freeholder board as it stands. It's been uh, six Democrats to one. Our good Republican and friend Dougie Albrecht has uh, been our lone warrior on the board. And that's why it's so important to get yourself and Darwin Cooper and Tony Romero on with you. And but, he's been uh, our, best, uh, our best volunteer on the campaign because uh, I said, wow, Doug, you know, I, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. He goes, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. I need help. Uh, <laughs> well, so, he needs help. You know, yes. <laughs> he needs help. And of course, the Democrats on this board, um, Victoria, uh, we're very apprehensive early on in, uh, in de designating Cumberland County as a uh, not a sanctuary city state policy or, or a city state status. And of course, this is intimidation coming down from their governor, from the governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, and uh, worrying about getting subsidies if they go against his social agenda, social justice agenda plan. And this is why it's so important that the um, law enforcement aspect of what you're going to be doing, we need mm -hmm. to support our law enforcement. Absolutely. Of course, we see public safety we see 100%. Yeah. Right, and we Absolutely. see Democrats throughout. We see Democrats throughout the country, uh, Victoria, um, repudiating their law enforcement in favor of the violent protest and the the leftist elements of the Democratic Party. So you're going to help support our lo local law enforcement in Cumberland County. Absolutely, and I don't really know how you turn away from supporting law enforcement that maintains law and order. I mean, there's some great equalizers that, that exist in our country. And I, I think one of them is education, public education. And I think one of them is the law. And you know, the, the, we have to follow this same law. It is one rule of law for everyone. It's not, you know, you have one okay. and you have another. It is one rule of law. And it, it's, it's the great equalizer of the people that live in this country. And I think it's one of the beautiful cornerstones of our nation, um, as well as public education, right? Everyone starts on that same, you know, foundation of a free public education, and then you you do what you want with, with it from there. Uh, but everyone kind of gets that same kickstart. And I think that we really have to, um, you know, embrace that and, and, and hold dear to it, because it is it is truly one of the things that makes us such a wonderful nation, such a wonderful community. Um, I certainly feel much better knowing that my kids, you know, are out, you know, in the community, in the neighborhoods, and, you know, there is law enforcement that there that's there to keep them safe or if they, you know, if something's wrong, they know that they can go to them. And, and I don't know what our community looks like without that, quite frankly. Um, I have a lot of, you know, good friends, family who uh, of all different backgrounds, shapes and sizes who have gone into law enforcement. And it, you know, they all say the same thing. It, it is absolutely, we cannot live in this community without that. And, you know, I think it should be no surprise given all of the other 
uh, surprises that we've seen come down from Governor Murphy this year, uh, especially including our election process, uh, which is still just flooring people around our community. Um, right. They're really waking up to the fact now they're getting these ballots in the mail. Some people are throwing them out thinking it's just, you know, the sample ballot that they always get. They're not, they can't believe that our governor would cancel, essentially cancel election day. I mean, that's, that's almost in turn what we have done. Right. Um, and it is it's, an it's one of our great American, you know, privileges that we can go into the voting booth and we can cast our, our ballot, cast our vote um, and, and do our American duty, our patriotic duty. And this year it is not so. This year that is going to look a little bit different. And, you know, I, I, we have friends in the Board of Election and, and they've all have said, you know, it takes an average of three minutes to go into a voting booth, put on a glove, go in the voting booth, punch your buttons and get out. It takes an average of 16 minutes to go into a polling location and fill in a provisional ballot, which is what you will be handed if you show up on election day to your polling location, which by the way, your polling location may or may not be there. Uh, and you know, we really feel that this is, it's taking options away from people, from seniors, uh, from, you know, our, our working men and women, our working families who have, you know, busy schedules. Um, this is really taking away options for people. It's not creating options. We already had a, an absentee ballot program, and that was great, and that provided options for people who don't feel safe going to the polls, who have other things going on, who have whatever restrictions are there. That was an option, and that's great. Um, and we should be trying to create more options, not less. That's right. And uh, you know, as well as I do, uh, Victoria, that the majority of the people in Cumberland County do indeed want to go to the voting booth and vote as they always have. Mm -hmm. uh, they can stand in line. They can stand in line for two days at DMVs or they can go to the local box stores and stand in lines, but yet they're not able to vote. This is a great contradiction. We've seen a lot of this with Phil Murphy, but you can rest assured that the Democrats on the Cumberland County Freeholder Board are supporting Phil Murphy. As a matter of fact, a week or so ago, I saw a picture of uh, Carol Musso and Phil Murphy uh, hand in hand, arm in arm. And it's important that uh, we get the Republican vote out because the majority of the people want Republican responsible le leadership with the great victory that we had uh, with our Team Testa team and LD1 representing Cumberland County. The momentum is moving over on our side. So it's important mm -hmm. that you get the support you need to be elected. And just let me ask you about the education aspect. Of, and of course, the education aspect of it, it's always, well, the Democrats want to keep throwing money, throw money, throw money. But now with the, there's been a lot of political, a lot of political talk, if you will, uh, with the actual curriculum and how important it is to take the education and the mandates provided and given by Phil Murphy and the Democrats and give it back to the local freeholder board and the local school boards and most importantly, the parents. So what are your thoughts on, on that uh, On changing that curriculum have? in our schools? Is that what you're, talking, right. is that what you're the, referring get, to? Get, get, right, more, more American history, more civics, more um, showing the American exceptionalism as opposed to mm -hmm. looking at America as, 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 uh, as, as a less than deficient or fair nation. Sure. I, I mean, I will tell you two things. And, you know, the one thing is, yes, always, you know, revise and edit. I'm an English teacher, JR, so revise and edit is always important. Um, but right. it should be revising and editing to make it better, to make it more accurate. Uh, and, you know, I, I right. do enjoy working on the curriculum for our school, but I enjoy doing it because I want to make it into 20, you know, I want to make it a curriculum that appeals to 21st century learners. We're educating our, our, our kids to go out into a very modern world, and we need to make sure they have the tools that they need to do that. So we want to do that, but the most important thing, in order for them to be successful going out into the world, and this is always something that's been very important to me, you have to know where you came from. You have to know your that's history. Right. And if you don't know yes. your history and you don't know where you came from, you are doomed to repeat those same mistakes, those same failures over and over again. And we are doing nothing but a disservice to our kids to send them out into the world without the tools that they need. So I, I absolutely believe in always going back and refining what our curriculum is, but not to the detriment of the facts and not to the detriment of history. 
And if, if there's, there's, I don't love every piece of history. I don't, I'm a, I'm a woman, JR. And, and I like right. to talk a lot. I like to speak up. <laughs> you can ask my husband and my father, and my grandfather and everybody around me, but um, you know, a hundred years ago, women did not have the right to vote. Women were told that they right. didn't belong where decisions were being made. And quite frankly, JR, I don't like that piece of history. It doesn't mean it didn't exist. It absolutely right. existed. And I don't want to see that kind of thing happen again. And if we don't educate our, our young adults, uh, what has happened and where we've come from, they aren't going to know uh, how, how to proceed in the future. And, and we want them to improve, right? You know, and this is a family thing too. Every generation kind of stands on the shoulders of the generation before and you build and you learn and you get stronger. These are our dreams for our kids. Nobody has children and says, oh boy, I hope they, they do way worse than I did. Nobody says that, you know, you have all these hopes and dreams and aspirations for your children. And if you don't teach them where they came from, you don't give them that accurate account of the foundation of their American history. Um, it's really a disservice to our young adults. No. There's, there's no question about it. And it's very important uh, to realize that the 19th Amendment was, of course, a Republican <laughs> Amendment. And the Republicans right. were the ones who supported the uh, women's suffrage. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, that's another great accomplishment. And in many ways, I'd say that that was one of the better, one of the best amendments um, apart from the 28 amendments that we do or 27 amendments that we do have. But of course, that is a Republican Amendment. Now, Victoria, um, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the imposition, the uh, infringement on civil liberties that the governor has handed down in relation to his managing of the CCP virus. Um, in many ways, uh, we've seen that um, he's gone above and beyond his uh, jurisdiction. There's been no word from the Cumberland County uh, Democrats uh, repudiating his unfair actions. And one of your responsibilities as a freeholder is the health and welfare of those who are in Cumberland County. Now, wouldn't you think that it would be better to make decisions about who should open and who should close and health uh, concerns in the community? Wouldn't that be better uh, taken care of by the actual local representatives as opposed to Phil Murphy, who may come down here once or twice a year and doesn't really know the uh, logistics or the special concerns that, in relation to Cumberland Certainly. County? Certainly, and JR, especially here, we have we have two really great assets here. We have a, a Vineland Health Department and we have a Cumberland County Health Department. And, mm -hmm. and both are great organizations, great entities. And I think that they are able to make accurate decisions based on their intimate knowledge of various businesses and locations and activities that take place here on a local level. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I do... Like we said before, I, you know, we like to be able to make our independent decisions. We like to embrace independent thought and allow people to think for themselves and not control them. I mean, last night, if I think if you ask anybody, would you rather be controlled or would you rather be free? They're certainly going to say free. And so we want to give people the ability to make good choices and choices that serve them and their families the best. Um, you know, obviously we should, oh, uh, I would certainly tell people to err on the side of caution. Uh, the virus is a very real thing. Uh, we had a family member of ours pass away from it, um, not being risky, not going out. He had a painter in a, in a rental house of his and um, the painter had it and he contracted it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was not risky behavior at all. It's something that definitely needs to be acknowledged, but I think that people can make their own decisions on how to how to handle themselves. Um, I, you know, I wear a mask when I go out, so do my children, um, but I haven't locked them away in the house. You know, they, they still do, they are, they are active children. Life has not stopped, life doesn't stop. Uh, we just as Americans have to find ways to address the issues. And you know, that's what I was always taught myself. When you have a problem, you look at it, you examine it and you figure it out. You, you learn how to address that issue. Um, you can't always go to somebody else and say, how do I do this? Sometimes you have to figure this out. So um, I, I think that, you know, less restrictions are good and allowing people to make good, sound, safe decisions is important. That's right. And of course, another hot topic in this election, of course, is the 
Cumberland County Jail. We're paying for other counties now. We've lost, uh, corrections officers have lost jobs. Uh, another example of the uh, incompetence upon a democratically led freeholder board. So give me your uh, thoughts on the, that situation, Victoria. Couple problems there, JR. Um, you know, I, I ran for freeholder in 2017. I've been paying very close attention to the issues for a very long time. And one of the number one issues always is jobs, job creation. Uh, if, you, if you look in the uh, SNJ paper today, uh, all of the county freeholders uh, put their candidate uh, interviews in there, their responses in there, and their opinions and positions. And jobs is on the list for most of them for what you think is you know the number one issue here in Cumberland County. So cutting jobs in Cumberland County, I think should never be uh, mm. a solution, okay? That, that should never be the number one solution, the go-to position. Uh, I never wanna see that happen. If any, we should be focusing on how we can create jobs. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of information that has not been released to the public. Um, and, but what we do know is that there was a decision to build a $65 million in prison uh, maybe a little bit less than that. They were going to use some of the other funds to do different things in the community, which is great. Um, but that decision was not made off the cuff. That decision was made based on research, studies, uh, and, and a vote of the entire freeholder board. And suddenly, without any discussion or discourse or public comment, um, we see the entire thing being canceled. So I just have a lot of questions as to what's in the middle. Uh, there has to be something between a $65 million project and losing 120 jobs. There, there has to certainly be something in the middle. Um, you know, when I first started working in the state legislature, uh, JR, when I was working with uh, Assemblyman Aselta at the time, our state prison actually had an overflow of, of prisoners at the time, had an overflow population. They were trying to figure out what to do with it. And simultaneously, we saw that our county jail had uh, a reduction in inmates that were there and they were looking at having to lay off some of our some of our officers and certainly once again that should be a last resort you never want to go to cutting jobs here in Cumberland County that should never be our goal and so we came up with a really unique solution out of the box thinking um, we got together with the speaker of the house at the time and we said can we take some of those state inmates and put them in the in the county facility to try to preserve the corrections officers jobs in the county and it was at no additional onus to the taxpayer. And these are the mm -hmm. kind of things that we need to begin to think of. There can't be an all or nothing. There can't be all that there is. There is always somewhere to meet in the middle. There is always some another, another option, another creative way. It's just a matter of how much energy and advocacy and fight do we want to put into the decision. And so I, I hope that we can begin to find something to meet in the middle. Um, if if the entire project is not the way to go, there has to be something in the middle. Um, but there, there can't be no explanation for such a huge paradigm shift in, in what we're doing here in our county without any explanation at all. And what it is that you're talking about, Victoria, sounds very Lincolnian, if you will. You're talking about moderation and you're talking about prudence. And of course, that's what the Republican Party was initially founded upon. And we are indeed the party of the middle class and the vast majority of our citizens in Cumberland County are middle mm -hmm. class people. And that's why people like yourself, like Dougie Albrecht, like Darwin Cooper Jr. and like Tony Romero are middle class representatives, Republican representatives. But as we conclude the program, Victoria, tell any voters out there who've not filled out their ballot yet and may be questioning, maybe, maybe want to know more, tell them why you're going to be such an outstanding freeholder board member. Well, I, I, um, I think I'll be such an outstanding freeholder board member simply because I know where I came from. You know, this is all about, you know, the family, the farm traditions. Um, and and knowing, knowing each other, looking out for each other, and this word advocacy, which I always talk about advocacy so much, and, and we don't really hear enough of it. A lot of times, um, our elected officials at all levels of government, and I see this all over the place, they're not really willing to speak up, and they're very quick to say, well, it's not, you know, not under my purview, um, but that, that can't be the answer. 
All right, we have to always stand up for the people that we have been elected to represent. We weren't elected to represent only this person or only that person, but everybody right. and the issues That's that they right. are facing and try to help them find those common sense and practical solutions to the complex problems that they face here in Cumberland County every day. Well, I'll tell you, Victoria, you've got me uh, enthused. I'm hearing all these initial Republican principles coming from you, and it's certainly a pleasure to have you on tonight. And I certainly uh, wish you the very best. Anything that we can do, the Constitutional Republicans are 100% behind you and your candidacy. And the citizens of Cumberland County will make a great decision by putting you on that freeholder board. So thank you very much. And as Lincoln said, Victoria, liberty for all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, JR. Have a good night. Thank you for joining me, Victoria. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.